Hi guys, welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is Heather. Uh, my name's Heather Cross. Um, I've had a bit of a flurry on eBay, but I had a big disaster. Um, so I want to go through my vintage haul of watercolours, um, and then I'm going to have a play in my beautiful books that um, the wonderful... Melody scent. So I'm going to be using some of my watercolours in these um, gorgeous books. Um, and there's Myth Morphia and Animorphia over there. Um, and I have been using my professional watercolours um, in this colour book as well. So um, I've been working on a new technique, um, which is working with layers of watercolour, um, building up layers, but using it on a very, very thin page. And it can be done. So um, you can do the rigger, which is a one stroke pony touch and go. Um, oh, hi, Marilyn. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. So um, I bought this little tin. Now, I've made a mess of it because I put these um, these rowney paints, these Dela Rowney paints, um, and I put them in here because it was a set in another box. And I had to squish the bottoms. And of course, when you squish the bottoms and then you open them, you get paint everywhere. And being a tight Yorkshire lass, um, I've broken the top on that. Now, somewhere I do have, oh, there's my alarm going off. Typical. Typical. Um, so this set, I wanted it because I've I like the size of it. I'll just push those to one side for the minute. <clears throat> now I bought this one brand new, and I put my <coughs> excuse me. I've got my cough back again. So apologies. <coughs> the minute I start to cough, uh, talk. So I bought I put my Sanilia in here, and this is a um not. It's the only. Uh, it's because I had the space. These are my tubes, 12 tubes that I bought. Um, and this one is um, that came free with something or other years and years ago. And it's sap green. I think it's sap green. So I bobbed that one into there. In fact, I don't think that's sap green. I think it's like a hocus green. <coughs> <coughs> but with the new tins, um, they kind of, when you wet them, they kind of go, Ugh! almost like oil on water kind of thing oh sorry i'm not in the right frame so um they're quite shiny and you find with the vintage sets they have like a coating on them like a matte coating now there was some paint on here <coughs> but there wasn't any paint anywhere else and as you can see it's matte and when you put the color on it it kind of sits really nice and I didn't like, um, I liked my Winsor Newton, but actually I'm, I'm kind of liking these for my colour book at the minute. Um, so I put that little set into here as a travel set. Um, now I don't have Cerulean Blue, so I put um, a Cotman in there and a couple of little brushes that I have. Now I haven't used it as that. I've used it with my Winsor & Newton series one um that i've been using for my color books uh, but this is a, an old well it's a it's a series seven double zero but it's the one i bought for 99p the famous one and then i have um a pure Kalins, uh, kalinski sable germany number four and i find those two actually will really work really well not for doing traditional watercolor painting my fine uh fine art Hello, we have a girl on the block. Now, we haven't seen this girl for ages. Hello, darling. Now, this girl wants to come and say hello, and you won't recognise this girl. Come on, then. Quick. Oh, she's not coming. Come on. Just pop that there. Thank you, darling. Come on. Oh, she was almost here. Forget the dream is now. She might come. Come on. Um, there's some food up there. She shall come. Because you haven't seen Betsy for a long time. She'll come for this. Oh, what's this, Betsy? 
here she comes. This is Betsy, like you've never seen Betsy before. Now, Betsy, sorry, we've got the cam. Come on. Come on. Come on, then. Oh, she's just not going to. Come on. It's only me. Come on, then. Come on, then. It's taken us nearly two years to get this cat to come out. And Betsy was very, very sad. I don't know if you all remember Betsy. Oh, hi, Pamela. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Betsy, sorry, we're having a cat cam at 30 seconds into the show. Apologies. But Betsy, come on then. Betsy originally was on, um, when I was in the front room, she had a, um, a cocoon. She wouldn't come out. Come on. Come on then, you know you want to. But she's a white cat underneath and she was really pulling. Come on then, good girl. Come have a look. Can't pick her up. You still can't pick her up. Come on. You know you want to. Come on then. If I pick her up, she might not like it. Come on then, you know. Come and have this. Come on then. Good girl. Come on. Come on. That's it. And then here then now. Come on then. She's still quite timid. Come on. If I can get her to do this, it's a really big thing. <laughs> so Betsy was found with her kittens. And normally when a cat loses her kittens, she just leaves them and, and moves away. Because obviously, if they've died. But she didn't. She was found curled up with all her kittens. And they, none of them were alive. So she was very sad. There she is. Come on. There, good girl. Here she is. Look how white she is and how different she is. Good girl. Good girl, Betsy. Good girl. And she's so clean now. She was really dirty and she'd not washed herself and she was just a sad old girl. Even though she's only five, she was such a sad girl and now she's such a pretty girl. She's such a pretty girl. And she likes her food. She's on special diet though. She be a special diet because of his skin she's allergic to lots of things that's a good girl come on sorry guys so this is it's taken i think it's about nearly two years since we first had betsy and you can see how clean she is now oh hi nadia welcome to buddy's designs anybody else popping in i'll just pop her back over there and give her her food there you go darling there you go breakfast in bed so she does live in her little hammock she has a big hammock uh, a, a big cat climbing. Oh, I've got cat biscuits everywhere now. Sorry, guys, but it was so important to get her to do that because it's taken two years. But what I want to say is sometimes you can, <clears throat> it may take two years, but it's so, you don't ever give up on a cat because, I mean, Betsy was a real down cat. And there's the elf master on the floor. Hi, elf. No, obviously. <laughs> Alf is hiding because of the big girl. Oh, oh, he actually went paddling. The other... Oh, he's on the blanket. Thank you, Alfie. <laughs> Alfie. Right, sorry about that. Right, so last month, um, I bought this little Victorian set. And I've lost all the little bits. So this was the little set. Um, <clears throat> Because I was quite fascinated with these. Um, I think these are Victorian, these. And see if the camera will pick that up. Upside down, as per usual. So this is what the watercolour pans used to look like. They were called cakes or blocks. And uh, this particular set is oops, and it's yellow ochre, I think, that one. So this particular one... Oh, thank you, Marilyn. It's taken a long time. But as I say, don't ever think you give up because she was a real, she was a, <laughs> she's looking at me now going, what are you doing? What have you got? She's such a different cat, but it's took, it's taken two years. It has taken a long time. This is another little, little tiny pan. 
Um, and I actually quite like this size. So this is also, these are a metal tins. I've not opened them yet. Um, these are Windsor and Newton. And these are, before they had the china pans, these are in tin. So I think this is quite old, this. Um, I do think it's English because, did I say this was? But of course, like everything, oh my goodness, I've got it in there now, I can't get it out. You would buy, um, what did I say this one was? Uh, oh my goodness. John, is it John Lillian's son? If I do that and see if we can see it on the camera. Come on, frame yourself. I think it's John Lillian's son. So it could be French, I think. I'm not quite sure. But I did like this little size and it has this little pan. Now I'm actually going to take, I think this is just gold paints. So I'm actually going to wash this off. Um, so obviously this is almost the same size as the ones we have now, the half pans. Um, and it is a lovely little box, actually, if you were, if you know, it's the size of my hand. So it is a lovely little box. And then I had a meltdown yesterday. Um, I had a meltdown yesterday. Because um, this is what happened. <laughs> You're not going to believe this, but this girl... You want a drink? Is that what you want? This is our Betsy. What a difference. Look at how shiny she is. I mean, anybody saw her on the films, a couple, on the videos a couple of years ago will know she wouldn't come out of her cocoon. She was smelly. She was all manky. And she had that under fair fur. Just bear with me a second. I just have to ask Covid to get some water for her. And here's the big girl who's uh, not doing as she's told. <laughs> I don't think she's doing as she's told, bless her. Uh, so I had a meltdown yesterday, and I'll show you why. Having bought, and I'll just turn the volume down, but having bought, having bought this, Um, just let me. I've got a beepy beep beeps now. Having bought this, this is the box, and look at it smashed to smithereens they what they had done is they just wrapped it in bubble wrap the whole box so all those metal pieces have been bouncing about on all those delicate pat cakes of things and it is smashed the side off you see the sides been smashed off because of the weight because all these things have just been bouncing about all over and I was in pieces I was so upset I, I was almost crying I could not express my anger that I have bought this beautiful um probably Victorian box by Rowney and co and knowing that how delicate these are with all this weight and it not being just actually letting that bounce about inside there. Um, and of course, they haven't messaged me back. All this is all broken. All this was smashed off. All the little ones are all broken. The pans are broken, some of them. I'm absolutely amazed that anybody can sell something like this on eBay and then just put it in a single layer of bubble wrap and let all these bounce about with all the metal things and everything else. 
So um, I'm very shocked. I'm very upset. Now, here we have a Reeves one. I mean, they were all actually in the bottom. And all these little pieces, they're like matchsticks underneath. Um, I'm surprised only two of them broke, actually. But they're a lot of wrapped. Um, but you buy them because these are were, were immaculate. But I'm not happy. <laughs> Oh, where am I? They're going to be my six colours. Of all the ten pens I got out. Yeah, that's the number one. Um, again, some have got little rogue hairs, but they're quite old of these. So I've got a fat one, a thin one, and then a tiny one. And what that does is allow you to go in there. Now, unfortunately, my hand is really bad today. Um, since I've been away, everything's uh, gone a bit pear-shaped. But this is a lovely size to get a watercolour effect. Um, having said that, one of the easiest ways to work, and is, I wouldn't spend 20 minutes putting water from one to another when I could have just taken the bottom off. <laughs> Um, one of the easiest things to do is what I call my, my touch and go. And this is when I'm not thinking a lot about, I'm not thinking, oh, that's got to be pink. That's got to be the right pink. It's not the right pink. I've got to mix the color. This is quite nice when you don't mix colors. Um, and I think these, this is the vintage set that I got. So these are Winsor Newton and they are a vintage set. And so these are China, these are not plastic. Um, and I've only just put this together. So I need a little bit of a sponge. I'm trying to remember where I put um, As I say, unfortunately, I can't get up and jump about at the minute because. Um, And I've lost my lovely little pot, which I had last night ready. Oh, right, that's broken. The little pot worked very, very well. Um, I don't know if anybody else has has dogs and that, but when you've had when you've when you've had a dog that's been here a while. That's why if you're going to get two dogs, it's always a good idea to get two at the same time. Uh, but unfortunately, we lost two last year. So, of course, Alfie's been on his own for a few months. Um, and there's always going to be problems. I mean, the, my other dogs, oh, they fought for 10 years. Um, the one thing I do like when I do this method is a piece of paper. Oh, thank you, Mel. Yeah, sorry, guys. It, uh, just the, the problem is, oh, no, I do. <laughs> this is what I was looking for. Again, you find things that you've never seen before. And I wanted to use this. Um, I've never seen this before. Now, the reason I bought it is remember I had the problem with the water pot. Now, my water pot, which was, um, I think it was either face cream and it had a false bottom. So I ended up with two little pots inside each other, which works perfectly for any water coloring whether you're coloring in a page or a book or anything you need two pots one is to wash the brush and the other is for fresh um and what i found in this one and this was on facebook buying on facebook whatever it's called is this little pouch here and as i say last time i was telling about i was thinking about buying these because they use them for dogs little pot that this is the same um i think this came first because this is quite old this um and then they realized well actually we can use these for, for animals because obviously people in those days didn't think dogs needed a drink for some reason in, in my day so the reason i liked it is it has this little pouch for here um and my hands don't work very well and again you've got your water this is proper watercolor 
paper. Um, and three brushes and a pencil. And I did use a pencil the other day, actually. And then in here is this little water set. Now, I don't think this is... I think this one is not Cotman because it was before the Cotman came out. I think this is the professional set, but I'm not particularly bothered. Now, I thought the brush was there, but I can't. There's a little brush sometimes. That sits in there somehow, or it sits in there, I think. Um, and then lo and behold, in the set I bought last week, which was the big pouch, um, and I'm having a bit of a... I think, and again, I've got one of these in here. Um, this pouch has the same set. Now, I think these are Cotman, actually, if I think about it. Um, but again, I love it because we've got... Um, this one hadn't been used. But what I do have, I now have two pots if I take it from this set and keep this nice. I have two water pots if I need two water pots. Again, we've got the lemon yellow and cadmium yellow. There's a cadmium red light and a cadmium red. Lizzie and crimson. And I think that's a purple, this one. Dioxidine purple or purple lake. Again, the lakes are quite vintage. The lakes are quite old. The scarlet lakes and purple lakes. Um, and it's to do with the pigment. Cerulean blue, of course, French ultramarine, um, and then we've got a burnt sienna. Now, this one is, um, ah, Elysian crimson, so what's that one? That's burnt umber, but I think they've got them the wrong way around. Oh, then maybe not. I'll put that in there, because they'd fallen out. They were all mixed up with this particular set. Ah, oh, and it had been used, the other one hadn't. And again, it didn't bother me. I wanted the little pot. I wanted this. I wanted the set. Um, yellow ochre, again, is a traditional one. And then we've got the greens, sap green and viridian. Um, and I'm not a, a fan of viridian, but it is in the vintage sets. So I might have to have a think about that. <laughs> um, so I'll have a bit of a think. Again, I was going back to the lady who was saying about her tins and, and having all these nice things. And then you always go back to the ones that you've used before. So you always tend to go back to things. Um, the other thing is I could clean this one up and give it to Amy. Um, and I can clean the other. Well, the other one is brand new and give that to Samantha for, for birthdays because they just like as extra little presents. Um, because Amy's a bit like me. Um, now, this particular one here has got the water pot in it as well, the water bottle. But I've used all sorts of other things for that. So you don't have to use that. Um, so if you were walking about, you could use the bigger one. I like this one because, again, it zips right up and it's the size of a Filofax, an A5 Filofax. So again, it's quite a nice size. Um, you could open it up and, and just, you don't have to use this, put a water brush in here and take your watercolors out and you're away. Um, that's the new set, so. And um, that one goes in that one. Next up. Um, so again, they're a bit dirty and they do get dirty. Now, I don't normally get mine so dirty, but I thought what I might do is just have a bit of a play with that set. That set. Um, the Cotman watercolours are perfectly, perfectly adequate for colour books. The pigments are amazing. And I've noticed that recently, all everything new coming out of Winsor Newton, they are not calling the Cotman student grade. And remember what I said, that it was on the, on the cusp. Very, very, very good quality. And I've seen a lot of paints out there that say, um, good, uh, say quality. And really, they're not 
professional. So it's it's quite a nice little set. So I can't think of anything else I need to say. There's lots of other things, but I'm going to have to do them separately. Um, I just don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, guys. Absolutely shattered. So this particular one, I've done a, another little colour swatch. Um, and this was a set that wasn't in this particular tin. I don't know which tin this was in. Um, but again, it doesn't bother me about these vintage sets. Some are quite old and battered. Some aren't. It doesn't bother me. Um, I've actually put the entire set together, apart from that green. Oh, no, I didn't. The green's a sonilia, isn't it? I've tried to put them together. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So this is, again, that traditional set of 22, which I love. So I'm guessing we've got a white, which I've moved. Um, we've got a lemon yellow. We've got a cadmium yellow. We've got a gamboge, orange, cadmium red. Um, that's Elysian crimson. That's Elysian crimson. That's quinacrinone magenta. And that one, I think, is, um, sorry, that one's cadmium red. That one's vermilion. Then we've got uh, possibly the lake because it's a purple pink. Um, we've got cerulean blue. Um, that one's French ultramarine. That one looks like cobalt blue. Um, that one looks like, I don't know what, probably a thalo blue. Uh, that's a Payne's grey. That one's sap, sap green. No, that's sap green. That's emerald green, which another is a vintage one. Um, that one is a hooker's green, which I love. This is my least favourite viridian, but it's in every vintage set almost. Then we've got uh, yellow ochre. We've got that red that I told you about, which is like a brick red, or it's um, a brick red, or it's called Indian red sometimes. Then we've got, um, that looks like it's a black. That will be raw umber. That's raw umber. That's burnt umber. And that's sienna, raw sienna. So we haven't got a burnt sienna in that set. So if you want an olive green, um, you want to add orange to any of these greens and you will get five different olives from a very dark to a very pale olive color just by adding orange so although we've got four greens there we've got eight because we're gonna have add orange um so that's why i always go on about if you wanted the most best most set 24 is the right set um, and that means you don't have to mix colors if you don't want to. But the beauty of mixing them is if you mix colors on your page, the page, the colors and the, the, the image has a connection. If you use each individual color, if you've got a set of a thousand colors and you just touch them, the page will not have cohesion. It won't have harmony. It'll be lovely but it won't have just that edge. And that's why I like mixing my colours. So I don't always, uh, the touch and go method is brilliant when you're not very well, but you need to do it for therapy, brilliant. But to mix colours, um, I probably ignore the greens and mix my own because I've got four yellows there and I've got four blues. So I've got 16 greens instantly. And then I can add orange to all those greens. And that another eight greens. So you can end up with hundreds of different ones. And then by adding extra blue and less yellow, you change that color again. And then, of course, you've got the complementary red to add to all those greens to make darker tones and darker shades. So you can end up with, either if you have the two and the, this set here, you've got within a space of 10 minutes, hundreds of greens 
with two yellows, two reds and two blues. And that's what I love. And you'll find the pages, even in a colour book, just have a magic that you can't get from not mixing your own colours, if that makes any sense. Yes, yeah, sorry, Melody, I was I was messing. <laughs> but again, these are professional. So, of course, one touch and we get so much colour. And um, what I was looking for was a piece of paper. I'm so sorry, Melody. I will colour this page. <laughs> so if you set it here, I mean, you can still colour mix. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to use the touch and go method, which is very quick and it's easy. And it's also um, it's just more therapeutic, if that's the right word. I'm just trying to see if you can see the colours when I pick them up. Um, you see, I would normally go that way for colouring. If you're right-handed, that would be fine. You touch the colour and you go. So you only want a damp brush, not too wet. Um, I think we'll give him a green. I must find a piece of paper, though. I cannot function. piece of ordinary writing paper that will do so what I do is I do have a rough idea but I messed the colours up look I fixed all the colours up I do have a rough idea of what they do um so that one is is the darker one but it's just nice to and again you just touch oops some of these are quite old and they've oh no i do like that one you see i was going to use that other green there but i oops touched this one and i quite like this one now so again, I'm just going to touch it. Now, I try not to activate this brush too much because we don't want too much water. Um, and if we start here and work down, we should end up with a watercolour effect. And I've got a wire across there, guys. Sorry, I've just got, I've got a wire across. Thank you, Melody. Yes, I forget what I'm. I forget what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. It's a, yeah, a few hours sleep is just uh, not good. Right, so I quite like that. So I'm going to use that for his suit. So again, all I'm doing is just picking up. Now, most of the colours you wouldn't want so much. It's just obviously this one is a little bit old, but again, lovely watercolour effect. Um. And it's a full on colour, but I'm not having a full on colour. I've got so many different tones. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit and then we'll see. Camera for a good. A good few minutes. Um, but the one thing about using professional watercolours is you're not scrubbing the brush too much. And because you're not doing that, you're keeping it very, very light. So it's dried almost instantly. And we get pastel shades and pastel tones instead of, you know, a full on colour. If you sometimes when I touch the peerless and, and the near colour twos, it's a full on colour. But I don't want that. I want some lovely soft shades see if i can just zoom in a bit and see if we can get in a bit i 
and again you know, where there's a crease and just using the tip of the brush because we don't want if you activate the bottom, you get a lot of water. And of course, that's one thing we don't want. And that's why this number one brush works from Derwent. Just activating that tip just gives you enough water to flow out. And I, I kind of like that. Um, so he's going to have a skin tone. And I think we're going to give him a bit of a, a bit of an olivey colour. Yellow ochre. Because he's a he's an he's an elf, and again manipulate that where you think the highlight's going to be, so we can get a lovely effect. But this is touch and go, very quick, very easy, and this is the, definitely the therapy. If you do not want to mix colours, um, I'm desperately trying to get where you can see what I'm doing. Push them all up there. Oh, can I do be awkward? So just, just activating it. It's just that green that's a little bit. It's a little bit. Um, unpredictable is that one and then we do want a little bit but the the, the pinprick of color that's all we're picking up and this is the touch and go method now this color is very strong it's yellow ochre it's not a oh you see how dark that one is it's not a, a wimpy color it's just i'm picking up the tiniest amount to give just a little bit of color um and Obviously, under there, we might want a little bit more. But by this method, the touch and go method, you can. Oops, it looks like he's got a moustache now. But anyway. And again, we don't want to activate too much because we do not want. Now, that's his neck. I'm pretty sure that's his neck. And then we'll do his ears. Oh, hi, Bob. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Sorry, I've missed you if you've bobbed. Um, and again, I, when you're not well, this is such a lovely thing. Have one book, have this on your knee. That's all you need. And your water brush will go in there, which is another reason why I put my, um, I put this set in here for the colour books. And I also put the, um, Derwent Inktense blocks the pull of paints. I've got this 24 set in here in the other tin. And I've done that purely because I can pick that up and it's got the number one brush in it and I can go. And it's it's pick up and go and touch and go. And in hospital, you, you've got the size of a book and you've got this. You don't need any water. You don't need a palette. You don't need anything. You can mix if you want. But if you want to touch and go method, you can do. So even though I've only got 24 colours here, they are, because they're professional watercolours and they're very, very good, I've got at least 10 shades in each one. So I've got 240 colours and that's without mixing anything. So again, I say that 24 is perfect and the vintage set I love um, for that particular reason. So you've got the greens and the browns for if you're doing a, a, a scene of outside you've got the blues and the the cooler yellows and the reds for sunsets and for seascapes so you can actually color everything everything you want to color within this reason but for for color books and this brush it's magic it really is so now i need a brown so again i'm going to look at the browns and think sometimes i look to see what else is brown so we do have the log which is a kind of a nutty brown so i think i might do this warm um almost sienna i think this one so that's the red one now i actually as i say i've messed up my colors because i've moved them about a bit um 
I do that quite a lot. I, I decide that I don't want them in certain places. So I have to check to make sure that this one is the right one. And bearing in mind, these are China, so they're probably older than me. Um, I'm going to do the... That's the log. And remember what I said about the bunny designs? The little carrot is already a little hole. It won't be as deep as that. It'll probably be like this. So there'll be like a little carrot, and it's already the dip. So you can go straight in it without panicking and having to start off here. You'll have that little tiny dip already made for you. Um, just a little tiny indent where the carrot is, and that should just help decide where to start. I think I'm going to do the log first, this one. Um, so again, start where it's the darkest. And then use that for your highlight. And then start again, because obviously now we're dark, so we want to be dark on the end there. And again, this, this technique takes uh, a few pages. Again, this wants to be quite dark. And if you're very lucky, one will go into the other. But because this is professional watercolour, you can move it about a bit. You've got to be a bit careful because it's it's not watercolour paper. But you can get away with quite a lot on here. And I'm really just picking up a pinprick and it's very, very strong. And again, that's quite nice, especially with the Derwent Ink Tense Block watercolours, because that means that you can up nearly get 20 tones from one, one um, colour because they are so bright. Um, you probably can with this one. I mean, that's not even the darkest. So if I touch again now, that's dry. Just go over that again to make that a bit darker because obviously it would be darker. And here, if we wanted a bit of shadow, I wouldn't do it more than that because remember, this is not watercolour paper. But it still means you can get that little bit. Oh, thank you, Pat. Yes, I'd say I did it the wrong way around. So um, instead of me, instead of me doing this, um, I think I'm going to have a stamp made. So as the paints are drying, stamp in it rather than have it upright. So have I think in the bottom corner of the oops, the way that there, just uh, just there, oopsie, just there, should be a little carrot sign. Bunny's designs and that design I used when I was 16. So I'm quite pleased that after all these years I'm using it. So I did sit yesterday when I wasn't very well and make these little um, plasticine. Um, and this is, the, and, and I'm not sure if I like the fact they're all different. Um, I'm not sure if I like the fact that they're all handmade because that means when the paints are poured, they'll all handmade they won't all look perfect I kind of like that I kind of like that idea and that's why I'm not pouring them in pens they're going to be cakes they're going to be Victorian colours in Victorian cakes um, hopefully <laughs> so that's a trip to London next week so I think we've got a berry so again I'm going to look at my, my colours um, and normally when I do a berry I do a mixture of half Elysian Crimson and half Cadmium Red. And that's the same colour I use for my mushrooms, 50-50. And again, I've got two reds. I use them. That gives me a third colour. Um, but I think these might look a bit darker. So I'm going to do the green leaves first. And I've got an olive colour. And I think this is this one that's nearly finished. But I couldn't do anything with it because it's, it's part of the set. So... Now, I've got quite a lot of colour on here, so I want the darkest one, which is probably the one under there. And then do a lighter one. And even if you don't want to do the light to dark, you can do like I did with the roses. 
um, you do one leaf, another leaf, another leaf, another leaf, and they're never the same. So it's the same tone on the brush, but start here, do a darker one. That wasn't very dark, but then go up here and do a pale one, and you get some beautiful differences. Um, that's another method that works very well. And again, that's a therapeutic way as well. Has anybody got any questions? <laughs> so I will, um, I'll, I'll try to put out some other things. I've, I've just, unfortunately, not, not been the brightest girl on the block recently. Um, too many Irish breakfasts, I'm afraid. And um, unfortunately, I'm a paid for bed and breakfast, going to eat bed and breakfast, even though it makes me poorly. <laughs> um, the only good thing is it, it does set you up for the day. So um, can't can't be all bad. But tight Yorkshire lass. You know, if I, <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw the pictures of the hotel. I might do a little thing with the photographs of Ireland. Um, I was thinking about taking over Filey House and using it for um, an art getaway, kind of, because Filey is a little coastal town, east coast below Scarborough, east of York, um, where the coastline is. And uh, I had thought about um, making it like a, a tea room, art room kind of thing. Again, very soft colours. I'm not sure if I'm going to get bolder and brighter as we go along. Um, but again, there's certain books that I like to do dark. I don't know if I'm the only person, but sometimes I want to be, oh, Miss Bright Pants, Miss, Miss, um, like the, this. I always want the book that's at the bottom. And it won't be in this one, will it? No. It will be in the book that I didn't pick up. <laughs> and the third one. Mm, golly, gum drops, Mrs. I think that means that the, the laptop's on its way out. Um, I mean that that's the red fox, and that's the set that that's the set that I set, sent you, Melody. And I love that's got twenty four full pans in it. And I love that set because that is the red brick red. Um, I think they call it Indian red. Um, but again, sometimes I do actually want to be in my bright mode, which is peerless and hydrous. And again, I am not sure if it's just me, but sometimes you look at a page and you you see bright or not. Now I think this is that's pastel, is that? Um, because that's the colours of Charlie. So I did actually color him uh, in the charlie colors i don't always want to be bright and then i'm always in the wrong book with the wrong thing <laughs> i don't know if anybody else finds that um so we've got some really delicate little flowers here and again i wasn't sure what color to do with the berries but now i've done the green leaf it's telling me what color i want Um, I think we'll do the, so we'll try what the, the red, I don't really think you have red violins. I don't know. We might have a brick red violin. I think we're going to have to have, again, I'm not doing the darkest color. So maybe, and of course, sometimes violins were two different colors, weren't they? Um, Now, this is where we need to be careful because we want a little bit of kind of shade and tone. But of course, the beauty of this is, look, it will it will move. And again, don't ever think that these won't move because they will. So if I go down there, it's very dark. And this side here. I can take that up. It 
take that up to almost nothing. Um, oh, he's playing with the bushes. I didn't see that. <laughs> I didn't see that. So his bow is going to have to be a different brown then, isn't it, obviously? His bow's got to be the brown of the... I haven't noticed that. And of course, now we've got some more leaves. And then just when you think you don't have any colour on, just do a top one and you'll be amazed how many leaves you get out of. They always go in a different place and then you get your different colours. And if you can remember, do the darkest ones underneath and the lightest ones above and then you'll always have the highlights in the right place. Oh, yes, thank you, Melody, thank you. And I've missed one. Again, you see there was a tiny little bit of colour on there. And again, I love this method because there's no waste. So the tight Yorkshire lass, every scrap of that professional watercolour is going on that page and it's all flat and dry. So again, it's a lovely, peaceful, quiet way. And this is the method I used when my husband was having this stroke and the stroke ward i just use this purely for therapy and it works so so well um i cannot stress enough how that worked i think i'm going to use this one i think i did the cadmium red and again if i i've got quite a lot on here now so if i start at the bottom so you can if you don't want the you can't get the highlight way do it do it the other way so and again it's a it's a it's a pin prick these are really really strong colors and i'm just picking up a pin prick of color so i can be a lot stronger if i want to be but i just kind of like the idea of having these beautiful soft watercolor colors and then we have some flowers here so i think we might have to touch this um this purple and again i've just a little bit too much jiggering the end about does not like it a pin prick of color very strong is that so yesterday i was on my own all day and the dogs were absolutely fine um so I, sat, I sat on the sofa all day watching john wayne movies which is always quite nice and um they just laid about quite nicely the one thing I think with the fracas with the dogs is the it's it's Samantha and I missed a leaf. Um, Alfie is Samantha's dog and she's made such a fuss of him. And of course, in comes the other girl. So uh, we have to be a bit careful with. But uh, as it all day yesterday, they, they were so good when I was on my own. So I think we're going to give him some. Um, we'll give him some green boots. Now we're going to give him some brown boots. You can have brown boots. Um, we'll try this brown. See what brown boots. We can start down there. And sometimes it's just a hint of a colour that you want, really. We should maybe make them grey. And we've got a honeycomb, so we want um might be a bit too yellow that one, I think. Yeah, 
will be a bit see this is the gamboge color coming out now you see the gamboge is quite a nice color and cadmium red ladybird but that's not red enough so that's a bit orangey red so I'll do a ladybird and then just put over the top again stroking very quickly um actually i've done an orange not cadmium red so it's a vermilion orange and cadmium red make vermilion oh there's another one here look so so don't ever think you need to buy the color if you haven't got it and then we've got our favorite our mushrooms now i started at the top instead of at the bottom so of course my highlight's going to be kaput but there is something <laughs> i've got the highlight at the bottom but as a as it doesn't matter really So this is, I always like cadmium red on there. But if we put a touch of Elysian crimson, again, it's just making them a bit pinkier than. And you've got to be a little bit careful because it's not watercolour paper. So, But again, it's quite nice if you get a different effect. Um. And then we want an ochre underneath. And actually, I normally do the stems ochre colour. And that's a very pale green. Again, it's an ice oh, coming now. Again, sometimes if you buy vintage old things, they don't always they always have a bit of a a coating on them, so don't always get just that right. But that's enough. I think that's quite nice, that green. And now we have a butterfly. The purple for the butterfly. Um, actually, I'm going to change my mind and going for blue, going for a blue butterfly. So under here, I did get quite a lot of again because it's watercolor of course we can blend we can get rid of that rough now the one thing you can do with this you can't do that with the ink tense block watercolors because you get the line because it's an ink but a watercolor you can blend out that hard line again you've got to be a bit careful because we're not a watercolor paper but um i have a little bit of blue on here and i want rid of it so um, I think I'm just going to put that little bit of blue in the middle here, like so. So, um, 
the butterfly is a little bit blue, really strong compared to the others. But I think that looks okay. I might just put um, a little bit of, hi, big girl. A little bit of dark. I also didn't use black, but I think I might just put a spot there. Just for a shadow, and then because I've got that grey, off white, dirty water type colour, I can just sort those out. That was quite nice in there, actually. I think put my arm on it, and I feel it's a bit damp, but it, it shouldn't smudge, it's not like watercolour. It just puddled in and puddled out. I mean, he, he follows the little, the big girl all over the place. Uh, oh, he's here. Alfie. Alfie's here. Um, as I say, it's mainly when Samantha get, comes in the room because she made a big, I heard her make a, quite a big fuss of uh, of, um, of thingy. And of course, Alfie's the baby. You can't do that. So, uh, so quite enjoyed that. Again, looking at a different page, I might want to do stronger colors um i might take this set with me and just and just work through it because again it's nice for therapy um this method works quite well with a bow and uh, so we've got um pink i don't really want this but again strong color at the bottom and then we can build it out and you can go back and forth so that would be darker and then that would be lighter and the same with that one so that actually would be darker even though the light's not in there and then this would again go round so we've got dark And then we could have, and because these are professional watercolors, they just melt like butter. And again, they're just so wonderful to use in a book. And I like using them in a professional way, but this water brush is just a delight to use. I mean, this is quite an old brush that it's stained but it always comes clean and it's just a lovely, soft, easy way to work. Um, and if I don't want to pick any more up, I can go back over here. If I'm very gentle and pick some more color up and then just have a soft effect, bearing in mind how strong that color really is. And then we've got obviously the heart. Now, what else have we got that couldn't be purple? Any more hearts? Because I've got purple on here, and I want I want a heart. Oh, I'll just do that dark. I should be on that side as well. Come back, this will be paler. So I will keep my shape. Oh, excuse me. My shape. Um, now, this is a bigger space. So I might be tempted to do a bigger, just see what green is that one. Again, using that. Um, this will be very strong viridian. And again, but that looks quite nice with that purple. Um, but again, 
darker leaves and then it's very strong is this color there but we want a bit of variation it was very strong that color that I, I picked up far too much of it but again not normally a fan of viridian but it seems to again you just it's good to have the color there in case you want that unique strong color to hit that purple so we've got a bit of an ochre color for the key Um, and we've got a nice leaf here. Again, sometimes you start this and you just get so carried away because it's so easy and so therapeutic. Um, and you again, you get a lovely watercolor effect with no effort whatsoever. She does talk sometimes. Oh, that's a. Is that, is that, is that, I don't know what color that is. is that, that might be a Payne's Gray, that. Yeah, it's a Payne's Gray, that. Have you got a chew, Alfie? Is that Alfie's? Has Alfie been a good boy? Alfie's just brought his chew in. Again, if you do want to do this, you can just start with a different colour and go over another colour. You get away with it once, no more than that, because, again, it's not watercolour paper. If it was watercolour paper, you could kind of rub up and down for hours and build colours up. But again, we want something really quick. Hi, Alf. Here's the Elf Master. Are you going to come and say hi? Can you sit with Mummy? Can you sit with Mummy then? Come on then. Here's one for you. Alfie. Oh, sulky pants. <laughs> no, it's not. Lay down here. Thank you. Lie down here. It's fine. So we've got a bit of a Yuck, going on here, but I don't know. I do her again. I think I'm going to do her that really nice purple color, I think, but a soft purple. So I think I will actually just do this here and squeeze some water out. Again, there's nothing to stop me doing that because I, I actually think she would be in soft. This is almost a pink rather than a purple. And again, I'm trying, it's a little bit wet, this, but I'm not rubbing, I'm just, do, and I'm not going to get a watercolour effect because it's a wet colour with wet. So you won't get that watercolour effect, but I'm not really bothered. Now, what's she got under there then? That's her arm. Right. I think we're there with that now there's nothing to stop me later or oh, what i could do is do this now but i'm pushing it with this paper because it's not watercolor paper really i should not be trying to introduce wet in wet techniques 
because I'll get a crinkle. Not that it will bother me, but I will get a crinkle. Um, I think she's going to have to be a little... I like yellow ochre for hair, so she's going to have to have... An ochre colour for her hair. And then she can have some little, um, I would think they're almost daisies, so we, we want really just a little bit of green in there, don't we? Behind there. To make the daisies show up and she's going to be on a pillow oh she's got wings i think i'm going to do her wings i think i'm going to do her some lemon lemon wings very lemon wing she's got now the skin tone i will have to just put down here because obviously we don't want it's too brown Um, and then we could do with a kind of a bright, I think we might have to go Viridian. <laughs> it's doing very well Viridian at the minute. It's doing really well uh, for a colour that I don't like. Uh, again, it's just suddenly it's there and it's going to be used. It's, it's oops, and I've gone over her arms. So you could do a lot, a lot slower than me. Again, on the top, paler and darker under here. And I forgot her face as well. So just and she's asleep. So. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Lemon wings. Well, it went with the purple, you see, because they're complementary colours. But a bit bright, but we'll see what happens. And we'll have a little, little bug. This time it's a cadmium yellow bug. Um, and obviously there's a candle, a bit of light there. And I forgot that. And the butterflies. Um,
Sorry, guys, it got a bit it got a bit thingy in the kitchen. Um, I'm not quite sure what they are, so just put pollen things. I'm not sure. Got some little red berries. And again, that red is the wrong red for that green. It should be Elysian Crimson, really, but. And go over them. Definitely little red berries. So thanks guys for stopping by. Um, it's a bit of a short one today. Um, so it's a week we've had we've had little miss a week actually i've just realized because it's a week since i missed the show last week and then i was in ireland the week before so um i felt i've neglected my duty quite a bit these are winsor newton but they're a vintage set um they're a vintage set um but they are professional watercolours, so I would think there's a difference between these and um, my other set. It's just I do like to use them because of their pigments. There's just something quite nice about using them. Um, now I'm going to use this here. Now, I should use a bigger brush, really really should use a big oh, and I've gone over the line look so it's uh, it's it's a funny day it's a funny week uh but as i said she was so good yesterday they never moved off the one was on one sofa and one was on the other and i was just sitting uh making my plasticine molds <laughs> um i'll just get rid of that thing and i can't get rid of it but i don't want to scrub you see it's a big space and i don't want to scrub it's a difference um what i should do really is use a bigger um if you if you can't do it that way break it up into into spaces like this then you don't get that line the other way um it's just i'm not thinking straight but what you could do is do this and then build that up and build that up so you don't end up with that silly line across like that it, it's more of a natural kind of a, a look um i can get rid of it if i if i really work hard at it but again it's it's watercolor if i let it go i can build it up i should have used a bigger brush because it's a um a lot a lot smaller space Um, but I am going quite fast here, so you can go a lot slower and take your time. And the brush is so well behaved, you just kind of, if you do create a line, it becomes a natural line. And you find most of the time you can do this, especially with a, a mushroom, because of the, the contour lines, you can find you can kind of build that up and it's not going to look too odd like when you go sideways like I did on the first one it I nearly did it again then
it's a little bit more natural than that one and we want the ochre and that was very wet because i squeezed it earlier to get that red but a very soft stroke should be fine And Betsy's snoring, that's the noise you can hear. <laughs> it's Betsy Doos having a snooze. I can't believe how well she's done. She's doing so well, it's Betsy Doodles. And I try and create a round mushroom. Let's create the highlight round this way rather than that way. So we've rounded this one this way, this time we're rounding this way. And we do that by making the sides darker. So it makes that mushroom round. <laughs> Betsy Doodles. Um, and then I kind of want After it's done quite a lot of work, this pen needs a little bit of work. So I'm just watering this down a bit because I didn't want too brown and too dark. Just wanted to give an impression. Now I can go over that and put some, and it is a bigger space, remember, some big spaces. We've got to be a bit careful with big spaces because we don't want a lot of buckling. And again, with this line up here, you could do what I did before is create dark and light. Um, and then I want some kind of real dark and I'll practice on this one. So we know whether those are quite dark or not. Then that's going to be a little bit lighter. And then this one could be quite dark in here. And then touch the dark grey. And we've made that brown quite dark for these bobbly things here, which we don't really know what they are. The foreground just gives them a bit a bit of colour. A little bit of definition. And we've left some leaves there, so it's a bit of a dirt thing they're going on there.
just I'd put a little bit of um I could put a bit of shadow under that one as well. Again, you've got to be careful picking up the dark one. Um and match that one with that one because that's what it is. It's it's that one. And again, you see, I don't normally use black, and here I am using black. You should never say never. <laughs> Just put that in there because it's a shadow. Um, the trick is not to faff too much because then you start making it into a watercolour and it's a paper, but with no crinkles, so I think we'll be fine. So I think I'm going to call that one um, finished because I quite like that. It's just got a little hint of of something or other. I'll, I'll get off the wire, darling. Don't be on the wire. Um, oops. So again, that's a nice, quiet way to work. Um, And the Cotman ones will do the same. Um, see if I've got the purple in this set. This is the one that was opened. I can't remember. I didn't think it was. No. Um, I think there is the purple on this one, so we can show. Where's the bank? Where's the bank? Oh, where's the bank? Where's the bank? It's everything today. Oh. Hi, Dala. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? I think this one had a purple. This is the Cotman set. Um, I like this one. And I think that one is Purple Lake. So we can do a very quick comparison between the Cotman ones. Oh, come on, go in there. And these two. They want a bit of a clean to these, actually. But... I don't know how to keep popping out. I keep forcing them in. But... Um, so, let's see if this is Purple Lake. No, it's not. It's moved. <laughs> it's moved. I don't know where it's moved to. Could have sworn I had a purple light there. That's Viridian. So we have three greens. So we've got three greens, have we then? No, it says purple lake in there. That is not purple lake, so bear with me a second. A second. That's purple lake. So I'm guessing that's purple lake. So let me just put this one. This is burnt umber. Uh, what, when they're... When they're dry, they come, I'm going to put that up there. I know that's Purple Lake. I thought I'm sure that was Purple Lake when I did it. Whoopsie. Right, so we can we can say. I'll just dump that in there for a minute. Right, so this very quickly we do a comparison between this set and this set. I'll zoom out a bit. So, Purple Lake, because it's named, and my brush isn't very clean now, because I had a bit of green on there. So that's Purple Lake, and this is the purple in the vintage set I bought. It's not quite Purple Lake, um, but it's not far off. But 
but it's a purple and it will be probably that's quinacrolone uh, not quinacrolone dioxidine purple um so this one is dirty and it's the deep cadmium Let me get rid of all that gunk off the top there's the cadmium red and this is the one i'm calling cadmium red And they both behave very well. Pigment for pigment, there's hardly anything in it, even though, as I say, this is supposed to be Cotman and this is the professional one. Cotman are fantastic when it comes to colours. So um, this one, the green, let's have a look which green. Oh, this is Viridian, of course, because I don't like Viridian. And I think we'll call this one. It could be emerald green, actually. I think that one's emerald green. I've been mistaken. Let's have a look at this one. No, let me have a look at that. Uh, this vintage one takes a while to get going. No, that's not Viridian, definitely. And that was a Payne's Grey. No, they haven't got Payne's Grey in this one. What's this colour? Uh, that's that's raw umber, I think. I'll just double check. Again, these are vin these are newer, so they're named. These are plastic, and this says this is Viridian. So at least I know where my Viridian one is. So there we go, purple lake. <laughs> Take that one over there. What's this one? That says Viridian. So we'll put Viridian in that one. And they must have popped out until they get settled. They do that sometimes. Um, and we said that was burnt umber. I've got a scalpel blade somewhere. Just see if pop this one out. Again, once they've started, they get stuck in. You can't get them out. I'll explain later. So if that one's burnt umber... Um, I think we said this one was burnt umber. Oh, raw umber. That's raw umber. I don't know what this one is. Remember, these are nearly as old as me, probably. They're quite old, this set. It's very near. Um, this is, I don't, I don't think this one has that in it. This is the fox red and Indian red. Uh, this is cerulean blue. And uh, this is cerulean blue. Let's see, again, this one's quite old. It's difficult to get going this. Again, some pigments wear better than others. And then we've got the French ultramarine and again I think that one's no that's cobalt blue this is uh, that's French ultramarine it's the purple blue which is that one so that's purple blue again this one's takes a while to get going so that's definitely French ultramarine so again this is probably 50 maybe 100 years old this one it's quite an old one is this it's quite an old one um it's quite a, an old set maybe definitely more than 50 years old this is probably no more than five years old maybe it's even a couple of years old so the colors very similar it's a vintage set Windsor and Newton like their traditional sets it's, sorry I mean traditional not vintage and the colours react exactly the same way, even though there's a big age difference. And these are professionals. And I think and I think this is professional, this one. I think it's only recently they've made it Cotman. And, and I think when this came out, this looks more of a professional one than a Cotman one. But I might be mistaken. I could be mistaken. Um, it doesn't actually say on the side here. It 
it's something to do with this number. It'll tell you what grade it is. Um, and the series, normally series one is more expensive than series two, or is it series four is more expensive? And it's all, again, to do with pigment. The blue pigments are very expensive. Uh, the yellow ones are not, and the ochres and the browns, because they're more natural. So they're in abundance, and these are more expensive. It's all down to the pigment. Oh, that made sense, guys. Oh my goodness, Melody says she's got. Oh, she's got. She's got raining, and um, thunder and lightning. Oh, bye. Have a hidden under the bed afternoon. <laughs> Take care. Thank you for stopping by. So, got a gum drops. So as I say, when they're like this, they pop out. Now I'm hoping that mine are going to sit. You make them like that and cut them into tubes, do you? See, I'm not going to do that with mine. I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put mine into little things, but mine will be bigger, so I think size wise the half cakes will be the same amount of paint in different and i've done them so these will sit they won't go in these little ones but they'll go in the big pans so they either sit on their own or they'll go in the big pans they won't go in the little pans but i have tested them all and they will go in the big full pans just in case anybody wants to put them in. So they'll go in the big pans. I've tested that they'll go in quite nicely and sit in a big pan. I can't, haven't got one now. I've used them all up, my big pans. So I'll have to order some more. Um, and then I thought this little bunny design would sit in this um, almost like a, a carrot. So maybe two seconds, uh, just two seconds. And a carrot and then the little the little ear up and the little ear down and then that gives you the little dip to start off with so you've got the little dip right um so thanks for stopping by guys i have to go i'm for, unfortunately i'm really sorry um i hope he's just cooked me some lunch so i have to go uh, but thanks for stopping by and i'll try and make some videos um and have a longer one next week when i don't have anything on so thanks guys for stopping by. Have a wonderful day.